I cannot wait to tell my daddy about this. Guess your dad's a big deal, huh? Yeah, he rich, rich. I gotta tell you something. Season three, episode four of The Shy. Pretty good episode. It's just continuing the story. Some of the things I predicted in the summertime based on that trailer came true. We're going to discuss it and recall this episode in my top five WTF moments from episode four. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on those notifications, people, because YouTube has been turning off notifications for whatever the reason. Make sure you turn yours on. And if you want to know about that baby of mine, I put a video up and I will be putting more videos up about baby L. She is here. And let's discuss the shy. Number five WTF moment. It was revealed about Lena Waif's character. She will be running against Duda as for mayor. And in this episode, she popped up at Papa's dad's church. And it wasn't a sermon she was delivering. As much of a campaign narrative she was delivering trying to get the people of Chicago fired up to get behind her. And in the beginning, did you guys see that dead silence? I guess she was too much for them. She's a lesbian who dresses and looks like a man. And then you got the nerve to be in church. And the pastor saying he likes church mixed with state. And then you go to the polar opposite of what a lot of religions tout as something is wrong. Someone who likes the same sex, but you want this person to represent your city as mayor. And then the big reveal for that whole scene was at the end, she was giving money to Papa's daddy and Papa saw it and Papa was told to stay out of grown folks business. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a level of corruptness right there. I was trying to root for that character, Lena Waite's character, because um, I want to see her have to have a debate with Duda. I want to see them go head to head. But it's already showing that her character is going to be somewhat corrupt or willing to do things that are dirty to win. So we'll just have to follow in and see where she goes. My number four WTF moment, Kevin and his new girl get to know each other a little more. The new girl actually met Kevin's mom at the auction. And we learn just how militant this young lady is. And we learn why she's so militant. And during that auction, we find out that her daddy has got a lot of money. They didn't say what he has a lot of money in, but he has a lot of money and he teaches his daughter the issues of equality in America, the issues of being black in America. He also taught his daughter to love dark-skinned women because she's dark-skinned. You see she's wearing the afro. The daddy is on it with this young lady. And I think one thing that stands out to me is her use of the English language. I've oftentimes been picked on because I have a pretty expanded vocabulary. And I'm just here to tell you that, that whites don't own the English language, ladies and gentlemen. It's nothing wrong with you talking with more panache or words that are more profound. It's, it's fine to do that. And if somebody want to pick on you, to hell with them. She's bringing that element to Kevin. She is, in essence, making Kevin more woke. And I love that scene when they was at that civil rights museum when she explained to Kevin about they was trying to wipe down Nina Simone and that she was going to go complain. So she went and complained to whoever that person was in the museum. And the way she complained was the way White's been doing it for years. I'm going to threaten you by going to your higher ups. Another way she could have complained is what we do nowadays. I'm taking you to social media. I like this dynamic for Kevin. It's just a matter of what is going to be the conflict between these two. What's going to be something that's going to have them at odds with each other? Is it going to be Jake? Maybe not. Um, because during this whole scene with her, she Jake introduced Duda to her daddy, who has a lot of money, because he's trying to get in good with Duda and maybe give some money to the campaign. So we'll see where they go with that. But I like that, and I think she's playing a great role. Number three WTF moment, which was very lackluster for me, the introduction of Candy. And when they brought her in to Duda's office, I really loved the way they did the music. They had the beautiful shot from her walking to the back, hips swaying, shoulders rolling. She walks in, hits him with that Candy escape smile. And he's looking at her like, where in the hell hole did you crawl out from, chick? What you doing here? And then you follow the story a little more 
it seems as though she's back to just help him solidify his bid to be mayor by being that good woman on his arm. Now he's got Jake where he's in essence acting like Jake is a son to him. And then in the limousine, we get a little bit more insight into their relationship. He's not feeling her at all, but it seems like she's still kind of feeling him. And she even goes as far to say, you would have made an excellent daddy. So it just makes you wonder, is she going to be having something with him? A lot of you all are clinging that she's going to have enough. She's going to have some kind of love scene with Lena Waif. And now that they've introduced Lena Waif as a candidate, I could easily see Candy's character taking one for the team to get caught in bed on purpose with Lena Waif's character to get her disqualified from being the mayor. So we'll see. And good catch by all you investigators that follow my trailer reviews when I do it. The number two WTF moment, the whole Emmett and Tiff cheating on each other issue. Early on in the show, we saw Emmett talking to his dad. <clears throat> the dad swears up and down Tiff is cheating. We see Tiff talking to old Spike Horhead, which happens to be Tia Matt Mallory's husband. And, you know, the trailer didn't say they was going to do anything, and I didn't think it, but I thought they would allude to it. But basically, when Tiff got over there, she kept it gully. She kept it 100. It was about business. She flirted a little bit, but, you know, all the flirting really was done by him. He was trying to get her to smoke a blunt. She was like, nah, this is business. And did y'all see her case? The chick has every strand of weed known to humankind, even some that are on Mars growing. She is about that business. Now, I'm not sure if marijuana is legal in Illinois, but if it is, I hope she has a permit because she legitimately knows that business and can make some money. But getting back to what were the issues with her and Emmett not having sex. Now, ladies, I'm going to just tell you this right now. If your man is doing everything right, he's staying true to you, and you're not giving him some, you better evaluate that situation quick. Because one thing that's going on in this world, um, as quickly as we are to excoriate someone for doing something wrong, we have forgotten how to positively reinfect people for doing what is right. Now, I know you shouldn't get a thank you for doing what is right. But that's just the way it works. If you want good behavior, you have to reinforce good behavior. It's no different from what you're doing with a child. And Emmett has been doing everything right. So they go to counseling and it is revealed that the reason she doesn't want to have sex, which is what she should have just said from Jump Street, is that I don't want to have any more kids. The minute she revealed to Emmett, she communicated to him the reason he thought about it he didn't seem so frustrated. I mean, I'm sure he still was frustrated, but not as much because now he understands why she's not doing it. He talks to his man, Sonny, who he said is the wisest person he knows. Sonny said, romance her one more time. He done that. And apparently they got it in. And ladies, the man is only asking for it twice a week. I know brothers who got to have it every day, even if it's for a minute. They got to have it every day. And this man said, just give it to me twice a week. That ain't that hard to do. But hopefully they can build from this moment and keep this storyline going pretty well. And the number one WTF moment for me, <clears throat> everything revolving around I Guy Ronnie, he ain't rusty for me no more because I'm starting to feel for him. He follows APB White Guy, figures out that he's living with his dad. He remembers APB White Guy from prison and, re and is reminded that APB White Guy is a sexual offender. So he busts up in his crib, takes pictures of this guy looking at young women, and next thing you know, he goes, shows it to Dre, and they tag team this dude. And then throughout the episode, Ronnie went behind Sonny's restaurant, tasted some of that chicken out the trash, and said, mm, I gotta take this with me. Mm -mm -mm. Then he finds him a little weapon because in the first altercation with APP white guy, he stuck Ronnie in the balls. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, if you hit a man who's got privates down there, I don't care how tough the dude is. You ain't no muscle machine to work your balls. You going down. And so Ron was like, the hell with that. This ain't going to happen again. So they go back to him. They get him to talk about where a body is located. And I know most of y'all that follow my trailer reviews wasn't worried because I've showed you guys the crime tape. I told you guys the crime tape was not going to be for Keisha and it wasn't. You should not even have went into that scene worried. 
Kevin's mom is called. She meets Dre. They go through the crime tape to identify the body that the white guy sent them to see and come to find out that is not Keisha and that identification was based on the tattoo that Keisha has on her body that her mama didn't know about. This was the other girl at the vigil that a lot of you guys mentioned in my last video. Did we see the other girl besides Keisha? That's who this girl was. This was the other chick that was at the vigil that they was um, you know, having feelings for trying to find. So overall, I would say this was a pretty decent episode. I enjoyed it. It was entertaining. And um, I'm just waiting to see what is going to happen with these other characters. We didn't get to see Jada this episode. We didn't get to see Lala's character this episode. So we can rest assured that they will be back next week and probably with a bang. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video, comment, subscribe. Get yourself that life game. I will be back live tomorrow night with Larry. It might not be as long as we normally go as we review the shy and some other shows. But we'll be up there for a little while. You know, this newborn takes a lot of your energy. And baby L is taking it all out of me. And until that next sex is hell video, I'll see you.